Today we're going to be observing the Merc and Perk Gourmand subspecies, as well as the third type of Gourmand that a lot of people tend to forget about for some reason. And we'll be aiming to discern what biological differences actually define these species from one another, as well as put a definitive definition on what is classed as a subspecies in the Ben 10 universe, using the powers of deduction, biology, and a little bit of chatting utter shit. If you go on to enjoy this video, please consider subscribing and checking out my other Ben 10 discussion videos, but without further ado, let's get right into it. It's hero time! Gondor calls for aid! <laughs> <laughs> so to start us off, let's pull both of these guys up onto the screen, there we go, and let's go over what these two species share before we begin to dissect what separates them from one another. So we know that Gormans, despite their small and unassuming size, are voracious eaters that are capable of devouring an entire planet, which have not only done once, but 11 times in total. When you consider that Emperor Milius made a machine that was powerful enough to blow up Pluto in an instant, the fact that these guys can devour an entire planet in a relatively short span of time is extra impressive, honestly. Both types of Gormand are short and stout. Both possess a set of protrusions on the backs of their heads that I would wager exist either for the sake of sexual display or perhaps for some kind of biological intimidation method, both of which are commonly seen examples of evolutionary adaptations in life on Earth. Then again, these guys are aliens, so who the hell actually knows what these things are for? Interestingly, the stomachs of Gormans, and no I did not do drugs before making this video, this is real, are actually portals to a pocket dimension wherein all the matter ingested by the Gormans is stored, acting as a sort of species-wide food source dimension. This is where I want to bring our focus specifically upon Perk Gormans. Due to the fact that a Perk Gorman stomach is absurdly flexible, it led me to wonder where the hell are the rest of Upchuck's organs? Because they've got to be elsewhere from the stomach or else they just get thrown around and mushed up every time the stomach would inflate and push them out of position. And that's just not very healthy. <laughs> this is where another piece of Gorman biology helped me to reach a conclusion. The location of the Gorman gills. Also, yes, these are gills. Look at any other instance of gills in the Ben 10 franchise. This is how gills look in Ben 10. With, like, Wild Mutt being the only exception where, like, his nostrils look similar to gills. But, you know, the exception that proves the rule, really. However, I know that Upchuck's gills are gills and not nostrils because Upchuck definitely doesn't have a sense of smell. Because smell defines most of taste, and being able to smell or taste things strongly when your diet consists of used condoms, bin liners, and Taco Bell is a curse that no life form would wish upon its worst enemy. It also makes sense that a Gorman would have gills instead of lungs, because lungs would take up more space in the body that could clearly be better used for additional stomach space. But for anyone who knows how gills work, you might wonder how exactly a Gorman can breathe on land if it has gills, and well, there's actually a few different possible solutions to this. For example, lungfish breathe on land by inhaling bubbles stored in the throat, mudskippers absorb oxygen through their gills, and the most likely option for our Gormans here, the walking catfish has gills that are straight up capable of breathing on land and underwater, so, you know, it's possible. But, with the gills being mounted on the head like this, that then made me wonder, are the other organs here as well? Bodies need fresh oxygen in order to function, and the reason why a human's lungs are where they are is for maximum efficiency, as air can be inhaled and circulated around more quickly and efficiently with this specific orientation. For Gormans, who seemingly have gills up here and no lungs at all down there, the other vital organs are likely in close proximity as well. Of course, there'll be a brain in there somewhere, a heart of some kind, and other than that, a Gormand doesn't really need any other organs when you think about it. Most organs in the human body are designed to make the digestion of food as safe as possible, but when your stomach is literally an inflatable interdimensional gateway, there's no real point having any organs for breaking down raw materials into their safest elements, is there? With the Gorman's stomach functioning this way, it would also imply that there is no need for urination or excretion. So basically, Gorman Piss Kink and Gorman Scat Kink are confirmed to be non-canon, because these guys clearly don't have griefers or buttholes. Someone out there is actually distraught over that, I just know it. <laughs> I'm looking at you, Rule 34 artists, I'm looking at you. The organs being in close proximity to the gills also makes sense for another reason, as it would explain the thick neck that connects Upchuck's head to his body. Of course, at least part of this is due to the fact that a wide oral cavity is needed to eat some of the things that a Gorman can eat, but this is likely also as a support for the big thick skull that's going to be shielding all of these organs. But now that we've gone over all of that, I think it's about time that we actually discuss the differences between our mercs and our perks. Because while these two species likely possess the same general biology, there are certainly some notable differences. So let's start with the stomach capacity of the two Gorman species, seeing as we've just spent all of this time talking about it. Perk Gormans have very rubbery looking skin, and even their voices sound wobbly. Now we're seeing stars, kid! This paired with the fact that their stomachs can stretch to such ridiculous sizes, leads me to believe that Perk Gormans outright just have elastic skin, a trait clearly not shared by their Merc cousins. We've seen in-universe that the amount a Perk can fit in their stomach without feeling full is vastly greater than how much a Merc can fit in their stomach without feeling full. And we've also seen that the stomach of a Merc cannot expand as greatly as that of a Perk. 
So this lends to my theory here that perks have larger and stretchier stomachs. The tongues of the two gourmands are also different, with perks having a set of four slim and dexterous tendrils, whereas mercs have a more traditional singular tongue, albeit an extremely long, thick and powerful one. The eyes of a perk are smaller than those of a merc, meaning that merc gourmands likely possess a wider field of vision. On top of that, perk eyes are entirely front-facing and flat, whereas merc eyes are bulbous and slightly further apart, further increasing the field of view. Perks have curly tails, mercs have straight tails. As far as I know, this doesn't really mean too much in terms of actual biology, so please correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but what I can say is that from a design standpoint by the creators, perks having curly tails is possibly a reference to pigs who are also known to be voracious eaters. The jaws of a perk are more even, whereas mercs have a distinct underbite. I would imagine that this protruding lower jaw is what's needed in order to actually fit their enlarged tongue in their mouth, as we've seen that the tongues of a perk actually come out from within the throat of a gourmand, whereas the merc tongue rests on the floor of the mouth like most life forms native to earth. The fingers of a perk are certainly sharp tipped, but mercs outright have claws instead of fingers, so that's another difference between the two subspecies. Merc typically are a little shorter than perks, though both are already short by default, so this doesn't really matter too much as a difference, it's just something worth pointing out so people don't comment saying that I missed it. Uh, but feel free to comment anyway though, uh, the YouTube algorithm loves that. Perk gourmands are incapable of digesting biological matter, and therefore only eat inorganic substances. Hi people, and I'm back cooking again. Mercs, however, are clearly able to do both, as not only can they eat organic matter without issue, but if they're also eating these planets like the perks are, then they must be eating inorganic matter as well, unless this is like meat planet. And lastly, perk gourmands have very simplistic body patterns, whereas mercs have an additional layer of camo print-like markings on their bodies. And though those are all of the differences between mercs and perks, this isn't actually the end of our discussion here. See, there's also the Queen Gourmand, the leader of any individual gourmand society. These gourmands, quite clearly, possess several of the traits of both merc and perk gourmands, though I would argue slightly more perk than merc, which we will come back to later, so keep that in the back of your mind. Also, I just want to say, these are not breasts, queen gourmands do not possess mammary glands, as we've seen some males with the same, like, pronounced pectorals. These aren't boobs, it's just flabby deposits of skin. Stop being horny. This brings us into our topic of subspecies, something that a lot of Ben 10 fans just plain don't understand, which has led to some uh, embarrassingly wrong takes. As we've just discussed, Merc and Perk Gourmands possess several big differences that separates them as species, hence why they are subspecies of the term Gourmand. Black people, Asian people, white people, and whoever else are not subspecies of humans, because literally the only difference is the colour of the skin. These are not vastly different biological adaptations like the tongues or stomachs of the two Gourmand species, these are just skin colours that are influenced by the volume of melanin in an individual's body. All humans have melanin, some just have more than others. This does not mean that we are subspecies, as we do not have any unique traits that set us apart from other humans only a varying degree of something that all of our bodies have. I just wanted to clear that up now, because if I hear one more but can both turn into a black guy comment, I'm gonna commit a murder. The answer is no. Anyway, with that tangent aside, let's look more into the Gorman subspecies. An idea began to dawn on me as I looked at these three species and attempted to discern their differences. And that's when a single word stuck out to me. Queen. What other species of animal works in colonies where food is collected and shared? What other species of animal has individual subspecies who are designed for a specific purpose within their colony? And what other species of animal works for a queen? The answer is ants. Out there in the wilderness, there exist over 13,800 species of ants. Some humble, some mighty, some dangerous enough for Coyote Peterson to pick a fight with. Ow, ow, oh! Uh! <laughs> in an ant colony, there are four major types of ant that you will find. The queen, the workers, the soldiers, and the drones. What might surprise you is that though all of the ants that you see here are different types of ant, they all belong to the same species, carpenter ants. This is to say, ants can belong to the same species and yet still possess unique adaptations that make them stand out, at least to some degree, from their fellow colonials. I think a similar situation could be said for the gourmands. If we defined queens, workers, soldiers, and drones as different subspecies of ants, then we could classify queens, mercs, and perks as different subspecies of gourmands. Gourmand is the species, these subspecies are the types that a gourmand can be. With their ability to intake vast amounts of inorganic matter at once, and their ability to continuously shovel more matter into their stomach thanks to their long and prehensile tongues, even if they're no longer able to move due to their immense bulk, perk gourmands are clearly suited to providing a gourmand colony with as much food as possible by keeping a constant flow of supplies towards the pocket dimension that all gourmands feed from. 
with their sharp claws, natural camouflage patterns, wider field of vision, and more muscular tongue, a Merc Gourmand is much more suited to being a protector of the colony. Whoa, Jesus, massive! You're in there, son. Likely possessing thicker bones that are less likely to break when attacked, which would also explain the Merc's inability to have their stomach expand too greatly, as the rigid bones prevent as much flexibility in the stomach. But they don't need bigger stomachs anyway because that's the job of the perks. However, due to the fact that mercs can eat organic matter, it would mean that any creature who attempted to attack the colony could be turned into a meal for the mercs after they took it down. Meaning that the colony could both defend against attacks and benefit from their intrusion. It would make sense for mercs to be so combat oriented if their job was to then make use of that biomass to further the colony. Then there's the queen, the one who possesses the traits of both mercs and perks. A queen gourmand leans more closely to perk than merc, which I brought up earlier in this video, and I think this makes sense as the queen being able to eat lots of foods in a short period of time would be vital in gathering enough energy for large scale reproduction, producing as many new gourmands as possible to serve the colony. She would need some merc traits in order to defend herself before she can establish a large enough colony, but not so many traits that it would hinder her ability to eat like a perk. And obviously she would need some traits of both mercs and perks to begin with because you can't exactly produce a subspecies if you yourself don't have any of the traits necessary in your DNA to produce those traits in your offspring. That's just not how DNA works unless you're like a ninja turtle. And there you have it, the differences between merc and perk gourmands, the definition of a subspecies in the Ben 10 universe explained, and from speculative biology to top it all off. Also, yes, I know perks are based on amoebas and mercs are based on toads and lizards, but things can have multiple references in their designs. I mean, just look at Pokemon. So I think that my theory on them being somewhat ant-like is also justified. But with all of that said, that's about all I have to say with this video. Thank you so much for watching, and now let's move into our usual post-video rituals. Firstly, big shout out to our channels Thunderbeast, Riverjoy, Middlemuir, Victor Matusik, and Charscream AA. If you want to help support the channel like these lovely people, please consider becoming a channel member today. Now let's move into last video's poll, where I asked you guys if you preferred Snarrow, Frankenstrike, or Blitzwolfer. With 1,431 total votes, 59% of you said Blitzwolfer, 16% of you said Frankenstrike, and 25% of you said Snarrow. Personally, I'm actually in the minority on this one because my favourite is Frankenstrike. I used to be more of a Snarrow fan, hence why Titan Carmoon was the first Kirin Tricks transformation and why the Kirin Tricks was built by Athep Kufan and Neros. But after Frankenstrike and just further reflection upon the scenes they had, I think Frankenstrike has emerged as my favourite over time. So now let's give a big shout out to everyone who quickly guessed that I liked Frankenstrike. So, shout out to Juggernaut the Dark Ultima 6758, Vault N95, Michelle Thomas 8878, JLR1357, Hyperanimus, Earthrealm Warrior, and Tin Cat 2347. All of whom are familiar faces on this channel, so. Uh, thanks for sticking around, guys. And now, for last video's secret message... Crinkle Day! Let's give a shout out to everyone who saw the secret message and left a comment. And also, some of these comments are just brilliant. I love how you guys snuck in the word... Crinkle Day! Without giving away that it was the secret message of the video. Very funny stuff. So, big shout out also goes out to... Daniel88476 Grim Drago Kia5884 Elez Rad HR Biartho That's probably not how you say that. Crinkle Dave, Crinkle Dave, Crinkle Dave, Crinkle Dave, Crinkle Dave. Once again, this video also has a secret message in it somewhere, so find that, post it in the comments below, and you'll get a shout out next time. Now let's finish things off by moving into this video's poll. This time, a somewhat obvious question when you consider what we've been talking about today. Are you on the side of the Mercs or the Perks? Leave a comment below and or on the poll guessing which one I prefer for a chance to get a shout out in my next discussion video. And with all of that said, I'll be seeing you all next time. Adios, fellow heroes.